Carpe diem, seize the day. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Strive to find your own voice. Seize the day, look at it in another way. Carpe diem, seize the day. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Strive to find your own voice. Seize the day. Isn't that, isn't that what we want to do here? To always seize the day. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we need? And by the way, here we go. Back on Spreaker and live streaming today on Saturday, the 9th. Uh, seizing the day. How are you doing that? Uh, with that, by the way, in quarantine? Are you truly seizing it? Are you truly um, making the best of what you can from inside? I mean, all these things are being offered. Master classes and we've got Harvard, we've got other schools reducing prices of high price classes for us. Are you seizing the day? Are you doing what you can to keep sane, first of all? And secondly, to keep productive. I, we cannot stop producing. No matter who we are, we cannot stop producing because that will be the downfall if we lose our will to completely stop producing. And so, the conversation I had with David Allen Arnold, truly, the, thanks Dave for an amazing conversation, by the way, truly has inspired me to say, how are you? Or ask, how are you doing with your unique signature? If you want to know the reference, listen back to David's article, uh, interview, it's great, watch it on YouTube as well. But seriously, how are you doing with your unique signature? Have you figured out what your unique signature is? 20 years ago, we woke up and uh, I was featured in the paper with the with Bill Clinton after the Cardinals funeral. I mean, that was quite a moment uh, for sure. But here's the thing. Do I feel like I made my unique mark? I guess you could say rollerblading, but I, I want to be making a mark not because of how I look and how I get around the city. I may talk about it, but that ultimately... To be very real with you, it's also also kind of the frustrating part. Not that I'm able to do that, but that that's kind of my unique mark because I do have a mouth, as you could hear. I do have thoughts. I do have things beyond the aesthetic that I still think um, gets overlooked because it's just some just say, oh, look at... How amazing he is rollerblading. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm a Trump supporter too. So what are you going to do? Uh, it's that kind of feeling. But then I, I thought about Unique Mark. And about a year ago, maybe even a little later in the year, but about a year ago, I met these, these uh, gentlemen from a foundation that honored their friend Terry Wernan. Now, let me tell you about Terry for a second, because you talk about Unique Mark. Unfortunately, he died at the age of 32 last year due to esophageal cancer. I mean, that is horrific. But he also was such a lively spark plug when he was alive. I mean, he wanted to join the high school football team, and he needed a doctor's note for that. Because, see, what happened was, Terry did have a disability. And as his mom said, Terry never let his handicap define him, his disability define him. And who we are, who were we to stop him from doing something because of that? Terry Warden, in his senior year of high school, with one leg, because unfortunately the leg had to be removed. And I had a refresher on this story from uh, Mike Sidlowski and Tim Spillane, uh, had to have it removed early on. And that didn't stop Terry from living his life. And here's a guy who had, as everybody says, he had stories about him, amazing stories about him. How he wanted to join football. How he was such a good friend to Tim and Mike, so much so they're letting his legacy, they, they want his legacy to live on. And so I'm here to say, 
unique signatures happen right in front of our eyes. God puts us in contact with those signatures, even if they have passed on, probably because he is calling us to continue his story, continue the story of Terry Warnin. And I'm also inspired because we were supposed to all get together for March Madness, the Final Four, the big championship, that Monday night, April 6th. That unfortunately didn't happen. But I hope 2021 it does. I hope we can see each other for football. And uh, I can hear more about Terry Warnin. But to see the outpouring of love at City Field that day in honor of Terry, it was actually the day they honored 19, the 1969 team because that was the 50th anniversary. To see the love that they all came there with to honor their buddy, their friend, their family member was very inspirational. Because he just, I, he, I related to him being happy and not over and not letting anything stop us. And I've also tried to keep up with my health so that um, just always being ahead of the game. And I know Terry did his darndest. He fought that battle so hard. And he was so, and the what reason we was able to do that is because he was on top of his health. Because he was able to battle, he was on top of his health. So I thought, man, I also have, by the way, let me, let, me, let me lower this a bit. I also have like esophageal issues. And you know what? I'm trying to tackle them head on. And I think meeting Terry's friends and hearing his story of overcoming, hearing his story of battling, humble me to say, well, I have the same kind of issues here. And yet here I am to tell his story or to hear his story at that point. Well, I think just like courting inspiration to withhold this kind of story of a man who passed away at the tragic age of 32, but who was loved, who did so many things, who worked and who did not let his disability define him. That's what I call a unique mark. And if you want more information, I, I would point you to the V organization. The V Foundation, rather. Which is... I believe they partnered with Jim Valvano. And, and, and they partnered with him. With that group, the V Foundation. And I just implore you to go to them. I implore you to look more about Terry Wernan. And his story of overcoming. He, um, from what I could tell from what Tim and his friends and Mike and their friends were telling me, like they, they really want to be around him every minute. And so, it's a reminder and kind of a perspective that unfortunately that can't happen now. Thank God we all are in health to eventually celebrate Terry even more once this whole coronavirus disaster has passed passed us over, passed over, passed away, gone, left this country, in other words. Because if we're here to tell the story, we should be here to tell the story and not shy away from it. If you have someone that you've felt very courageous about and felt very inspired by and felt like their story should be told but haven't told it yet, now's the time. Because everybody is listening. Everybody's in the house. Everybody is indoors trying to stay safe and they want to hear that inspiration too. So don't deprive them of that. If you know stories and you hear of stories like Terry Wernan who with one leg after an operation... Um, in, in his younger days, wanted to play football on that leg. And the doctors and the high school football team and his parents and everybody supportive of that. That sticks out. That, the, that he was so determined and that his parents were so supportive of that. And his doctors. That's inspirational. And so, Unique Mark, you want to talk about Unique Marks? Well, what about your, who in your life? has made a unique mark, a unique impact. 
on you to this day. Really, ask that. Because if um, if you know of that and haven't told their story, or haven't told it just yet, I think now's the time to do it. I think now it's talk about those who are truly making a unique mark. Because you know what we're hearing on our TVs? The ununique thing ever. It's now not, you know, they call it novel coronavirus. I think that term has been hammered into our brain day by day. Find something unique. Find something different. Find people that are making that impact, that are making the unique, that aren't making the television screens, but should be. That aren't making blogs, but should be. Because I'm sure every one of us knows someone who they'd like to carry on their legacy after they have, uh, after those people have passed on. I'm sure that you will have a Terry Warnon in your life. You will have someone who battled with esophageal cancer, who did not let his one having one leg amputated define him. The uniqueness shouldn't be about the aesthetic. It's about how you approach the aesthetic. How you approach the battle scars. And if you can approach them in a way that still gets everyone gravitating toward you, I think you've done something right. I truly do. I truly do. And when I said pass away with the coronavirus, I meant the virus itself, not people. Relax. I want this virus out of this country. Passed over us. That's what I want to see. And I want to see stories of inspiration continue to flow. I want to see people talking about the impact if they felt one from someone in their life truly so. Because we all can do our part to inspire. And God gets us all up in the morning, thank God, most of us, yes. And I think he just wants us to to, to, to do that, to inspire people. And sure, I'm rolling on one leg, I, I guess, but I want to also know, I want to make it known that I... My unique mark shouldn't only be the aesthetic of rolling on one leg. It just shouldn't. Because I'm quite deeper than that, actually. I'm a very confusing person at times. I'm a very uh, fast talker. I'm also weird. Uh, Because I just, I don't know, I guess I just am that. But I also want to say that it, it, unique mark, as we talk about it with David Allen Arnold, is more about the um, the aesthetic, how you look. Well, if we can move past that and see the soul of someone who has overcome, like many adored the soul of, of Terry Wernan, then we'll be better off. Because if you don't let your soul be as uh, negative toward your aesthetic, in other words, if your soul continues to be intact and it continues to be happy and you continue nurturing the soul, then you will you will have your unique mark. We see it every day. A lot of people are just hard on themselves. They're tough on themselves. They they don't understand the uniqueness that they have. And I think it's time to inspire others to realize, yeah, you're unique. You've got something different. Embrace it. Don't run away from it. Because not running away from it will give you some kind of calming some relaxing and it will give you fun the soul wants to have fun the soul needs 
to have fun. The soul is, I think, the uniquest part of anybody. Because we, we were all born with a different soul. And if we can shift the unique mark from the aesthetic of playing football with one leg, the aesthetic of rollerblading with one leg, if we can move away from that aesthetic and into the, well, yeah, they have this, but they're, they're not... Um, they're not just living life on that. In fact, they make it the least part of them that um, that makes them who they are, who they are. I guess that's where the uniqueness should come in. And I mean, granted. We all post unique photos because they're just that, but it's the energy, the the energy of the soul behind that uniqueness. And clearly, Terry exuded that for 32 years and was beloved by everyone. So I, I implore you to look up more about Terry Warren. I implore you to stay in touch with... Uh, my friends there, Mike Sidlowski and Tim Spillane. I mean, they are they are great, and they're carrying on their friend's legacy. And that's very special. They're not hoarding that inspiration from others. In fact, they're they're telling Terry's story to inspire others. We need more people like that. Cause. I think the uniquest part when it does come to having a friend with disability, I think the most unique part is truly embracing them for who they are and that and not wishing them to be anything else. Just loving them for them. Just understanding as we talked about a week ago, yes, maybe your kid does have autism. If he shows the signs, get them checked. Do not be afraid of the unique. Just be there for, for those who feel it. Or those who you think are and they don't feel it. That makes sense. Because we all have a place on this earth. We really do. And I believe that those people on this earth enhance, the, you know, enhance God's plan. By saying yes. I mean, look at Johnny Erickson Tata. Erickson Tata. She lost her leg. I think it was one. But she didn't hate on it. She didn't get frustrated. Maybe in the beginning, but then she accepted. She knew this was God's plan for her, some way or another. And now she's doing radio, too. We've got on TikTok people who are amputees having the time of their life right now. So, if you feel stuck in quarantine, if you feel stuck that you can't see anybody, if you feel stuck that you aren't unique, well, channel that soul you have and say, yeah, I am unique. Yeah, I do have something to offer. Yeah, I will share the story of how God has helped me through this life. And I can only imagine Terry did that. Is share his story. And. You know. When you're disabled. And you start getting called inspirational. That you're like well I'm just a person. And that's it. Just being. And just understanding the uniqueness. That is our unique signature. Not trying to change the unique. Not trying to boast about the uniqueness either, by the way. Just being. Just understanding you are. But going along your life. Because I think if you do drum the beat too much, 
about almost everything, people get tired. And I'm kind of guilty of that. But also, I, I love that God made me this way. As I told Denise Richardson, I look down every day and I think God made me who I am because I think that this was his plan. And I love that Terry's friends and family understand that too. That God's plan overall. And God has put them in a position to carry on a legacy that is, is so special. And means so much that they want the world to know about it. And when you get to that level. When you get to that level. You know that. Uniqueness is awesome. And and you just love it. You just love it. Anyway, I'm Alex Garrett. I have actually someone who survived, yes, survived West Nile virus. And now he has some thoughts for the coronavirus patients that have been recovering, the families, and ways we can further prevent ourselves from getting sick. Grant Raphael is his name. I'll talk... Talk to him about 10 a.m. Eastern. So come right back after Radio Hope at 9 a.m. Eastern. Come right back to Keep Me With Alex Garrett for the Saturday sit down. Have a great rest of your Saturday. And yeah, if you want to check it back out, come on back. Talk to you soon.